Hello, my darling Fumi Nation. How are you? <laughs> How are we? My name is Fumi Desalovold. For those of you that are stopping by for the very first time, you are so very welcome indeed. Are we living and loving? I am going, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting invited to all kinds of events, my darlings, and I'm living and loving. I am going to a gala tonight and i seldom wear black but i so loved this outfit that i thought for me why not i am wearing my favorite makeup juvia's place everything discount code Fumi, and i am loving the juvia skin as well living and loving out here in these streets and let me get up and show you the dress of which i got at karen millen there you go darlings are we living and are we loving? Are we loving the fabulosity, the tassels all around? How gorgeous, how absolutely gorgeous with the tassels. It's so pretty, it's so feminine, beautiful. I live and I love. It's so feminine and it's also so timeless. You could have this for years and years and years. Let me also tell you the trick of this this is why you guys have to come to my one-on-one -on -one fashion arcade this is actually a top and the bottom part is actually a boob tube dress that ula bought for me when i was pregnant with adrian yes my darlings i'll put the image for you and you can let karen Millen know that it was for me that sent you so why are we here well my uh dms were bombarded I got messages via email. <laughs> I even got messages here on YouTube. Fumi Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck are filing for divorce. Well, as a matter of fact, not necessarily Ben Affleck. Um, it was Jen that filed. Uh, not Ben, not Benny Medina, not any of her lawyers, but herself. And she made it a point to file on the 20th of August, which was two years to the day when they got married in Georgia. Benifer 2.0 is over. We are also finding out that there was no prenup. Although I don't think that is going to be an issue. Um, she stated that they had officially broken up on the 26th of April. And they have been carrying on this charade until then. I also think that in carrying on this charade, she hoped that perhaps Ben would change his mind. I think that was why it lasted this long. And evidently, Ben has not changed his mind. And I think he gave her the grace for her to go ahead and file. What can I say? What do I say? I just talked about the inner child of all of us and her in particular in an episode last week. Of course, he was a no-show for her birthday where she was in the Hamptons and threw herself a Bridgerton party, which was absolutely fabulous and cute. She was there with her children. She was seen with his children as well. And they were seen together sporadically throughout, but not consistently. And I had stated there then that when you do something consistently, if you're not seen, people will wonder what is going on. If you don't see me here on YouTube for a month and I'm not on tour, you will say for me, where are you? Because I am consistent. I upload literally every single day. And so, when you break a pattern, people notice. Um, Jennifer, you are fast becoming the Elizabeth Taylor of our time. Elizabeth Taylor was married eight times, and she married the love of her life twice, which was Richard Burton. I believe that Ben Affleck is the love of your life. There was something about him in the first edition of your relationship that you have not let go of. And for whatever reason you felt that we could do this again, 
because you still loved him, because you still held a candle to him. The thing is, 20 years is a long time. And people change. I've changed from 20 years ago. I've changed from when I first got married 15 years ago. We change. And I've said it and I'll always say it. Jennifer Gardner was a wonderful wife there in support of your relationship. And you should have wondered to yourself why a woman so put together that had three children with Ben is so willing to let him go. Because Ben had baggage. Because Ben has issues. And Ben also has that very astringent feeling towards the media. He does not want his relationship on social media. He even said it in the documentary, the film, the sing-along, and the album of which bombed this year. I had a very firm sense of boundaries initially around like the press. While Jen, I don't think, objected to it in the, in the way I did, I very much did object to it. Getting back together, I said, listen, one of the things I don't want is a relationship on social media. And then I sort of realized it's not a fair thing to ask. We're just two people with kind of different approaches trying to learn to compromise. You've had a terrible year, and all of us have had those off years. But I don't think you are listening. How can it be so obvious to people around the world to know that your relationship choices are not the best for you and you cannot seem to see anything? It means that perhaps you really don't see it, you're blinded. And I think that you have to go into therapy and find self-love. Self-love. Self-love will bring out the best in you because you will think about yourself first. And that brings me to Cookie who told Lucius, I gotta put myself first, Lucius. I gotta put me first. Do you know I put myself first? Because that way I'm the best mother to Adrian. That way I'm the best wife to Ula. That way I'm the best daughter to my parents. That way I'm the best friend to Christina. That way I'm the best sister to my brother and to my sister. That way I am the best mother, sister, auntie, nanny, titi, tata, to Fumi Nation. I have to put me first. I have to have solid, sound mental health. I have to sleep. I have to exercise. I have to work out. I have to eat right. I have to find my own happy space and place. I have to put my little makeup and do my little nails. I have to find my happy because nobody can make me happy. I have to make myself happy and content and satisfied in order for me to bring out all of this generosity and love and pour into all of you. I have to pour into myself. I gotta put me first. And I cannot fantasize and throw confetti in the air and hope that they will stay in the air because I have a fantasy about what reality is. The reality is you can wear beautiful dresses. You can have five dresses for your wedding, as I did. The wedding is the celebration of a marriage that will be up and down and where things will hit you on a Tuesday afternoon that you don't see coming. And the two of you will have to want to be, have to want to be together to see it through. You see, the good times, and I've said it before, is the reward. Jennifer, I think that you want happy all the time. You want confetti and you want sunshine to boom through your door every day with the man that you love. And that's not reality. And of all the people that you love, which is Ben, you did not seem to look that Ben cringed in every single photo 
on every single red carpet where you just glowed because that's your natural. He suffered many times because this was not what he wanted. And I'm going to also apply the blame to him because Ben, you knew what Jennifer was. You knew what Jennifer is. You've had all of this time to know who she is. Did you think she would change like you have not changed? You pursued her with love letters of which Jennifer, you ran out to go and show everybody. Nothing was private. You have to respect the people that you live and love. How did you pop the question there? The details about that word that are private not and kind private of special. Not private anymore because I told everybody. As you very well know, Ula does not care for this. And yet he pursued it for me because he knew for me this is you. You are who you are. Ula told me that once and I really did not understand until I understood. He said for me, I have to know your family and I have, and I know that. And I went into this knowing that, that a good chunk of you will be loved by many. And I have to let that be. And I have to cherish and love that part of you that you reserve for me. And for our love letters, the letters that you also write to me, I want them private. Ula can write some love letters, baby. Woo! But they're for me. And they're for our son. For our son to know that you love your wife the way your father loves mother. That is what I want. You have to separate the two. I'm for me. I'm glamour. Yes, I am, and I live for it, darling. <coughs> but at home, I'm mama, I'm wife, and I cut off, and I switch off, because I have to give myself to them. Jennifer, I want you to take a breath. In your 55th year, you're still beautiful, with a beautiful body, you are intelligent, you are smart. Yes, you are. You are one of the hardest workers in Hollywood. I knew that when I was in Hollywood because they talked about you. Hard worker, the hardest. And you're sensational and you're tintillating and you're fascinating and you're whimsical and you're fashionista. You are brilliant at what you do, but you feel miserably at what you don't. And that has been your heart. And what you don't realize is that that is the temple to everything else out there because it starts from within. I am sorry, so, so very sorry that yet again you are at this space where you are on all social media platforms. You are on all newsletter outlets. You are on all the links and all of the blogs. I'm sorry about that for you, but of which you generated. Because the second that you're in a relationship, you want to let everybody know, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, as opposed to focusing on what is actually love. I was speaking to a couple the other day, to the husband, and I said, I know how it looks on the outside. You have all of these love letters to this certain person. And it's all fantasy. And every time you meet each other, you smell good of perfume and fragrance and moisturize. And you're clean and you have time for each other. Because that's what an affair presents. But what you don't understand is that that's all it presents. It's not the everyday of when your wife wakes up and takes the children to school. And rushes to work. And rushes back home to make dinner. And sometimes she's had a hard day with a colleague or with a boss but she still comes those small sacrifices to make face with you and you're upset because you know what this evening I don't feel like making love because you did not take it into your account to say let me do something nice for her let me take care of the children let me make dinner it takes work and in so doing you admire each other but you have enough money Jennifer and Ben to call it quits and Jennifer this is number four well, you're only 55. And in this day and age, 55 is the new 30. We are going to be looking hot, steaming, sexy in our 70s. I'm going to make an effort. But everybody saw this. Because you put it out there. You have to curtail yourself 
and take everything in. Maybe take one or two pages from Ben and be private for a good while and let the fantasy wear off. Because you would have said, I dated him for a while, two years. It's not enough for somebody like you, Jennifer. You need to date for like five years to know whether this is what I want to do. Because you've got children. Because it's not good for your daughter or for your son to see this and think that it's normal. Because it's not. It's not also good for them to see that you brought a fourth man to your bed. It's not good because it traumatizes them because they grow up and they either adapt everything you've shown them or they reject everything that they've seen from you. They make friends. They make sister brother friends. And then the time comes when they're no longer sister brother friends. Four times. And all of your exes are still married to their significant others. So the issue here is that when you become the common denominator, it really does become about you. And you said it in your documentary. You had it right there. What is wrong with this chick? What is wrong? And you said behind the scenes where everybody thought it was fine, it was disastrous. Perhaps Benny Medina is advising you and perhaps you're not listening. Perhaps everybody out here in the streets is giving you advice and you are not listening because you think you know better, but apparently you don't know anything at all. We've talked about this until we are blue in the face. So now my simple, humble sister advice, because I'm older than you. You are in July, I think, and I'm in April. Yeah, so we've got a couple of months ahead. One thing I know, one thing I understand is human behavior and relationships. I understand platonic relationships, intimate relationships. It's my gift. It's a gift that's been given to me and I understand it. It's very clear to me. That's why I love my haters. <laughs> I love my haters because I understand the relationship that they have with me. Yes, I do. <laughs> Come, Jennifer, and take a session with me. I have sessions, paid sessions, of where you can come. And we can sit down and kiki for two hours. And I'm going to tell you privately, perhaps, what you need to hear. I love you. You are beautiful. You're amazing. You're amazing that you have come through, gone through this year the way that it has turned out. But it only makes us stronger. There are no regrets in life. And there should never be. Remember Ben now for who and what he is and what he contributed to your life. And know that you will be friends going forward. That you don't have a prenup doesn't mean anything necessarily when it comes to Ben. I don't think that's going to be an issue. And I think that you should try and become friends. That is always healthy. There are ex-boyfriends that are still my friends. And they've become Ula's friend. Yes. And it's a wonderful relationship. Because we knew that when it came down to having that partner relationship, it didn't work for us. But there were other aspects of each other that we loved and appreciated all these years. And one of them even threw a baby shower for me and Ula. So no regrets. No regrets in this life. Like I have said, everybody got a dream. Everybody has a plan, a goal, an ambition that we work towards. Where you are and where that plan is and that dream is, is here now the journey. There are no regrets. And you see, our Father up above, He will continue to teach you until you learn. And He will continue to show you the good, the bad, the difficult, until you learn, until you physically, emotionally, mentally let go. 
and say, okay, you know what for me? Um, let's have that session. I'm now prepared to learn because I am now hurting myself too much. And I am hurting those that I love. And those are your children. Do not forget to like, to subscribe, to hit the notification button, my darlings. And I will see you what? I will see you sooner than later. All of my love. Ha, 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 ha.